Hello? Oh, good, it's on. Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm going to have to whisper. I'm not used to that. It's done. I'm sorry. That's it. I don't know. I just, I'm not going to get my notes, I guess. <sighs> hey, everybody. How's it going? How are you enjoying Gurkhan? Good? Now that it's a uh, hangover day and there's only half the audience here, <laughs> at least I didn't have to give my talk at uh, like 8 o'clock in the morning. So uh, give me a second. All right, so my name's Amanda. I'm here to talk about a fishing program that I put into place at a hospital that I worked at. Um, I was there for seven years, and we had a pretty good um, infrastructure already. And the program that we put together, I'm going to go over how we put together, some of the stuff that I learned, some of the stuff that I'll do different, the metrics that we tracked, and how well we did over time. So that's me. I'm InfoSister Online. Uh, this is some of the stuff that I do. So I did Purple Team for a while. I was a Windows admin, yay. Um, did a lot of server, um, Active Directory group policy, um, anything Windows, name it. I mean, Exchange. We were kind of, uh, at the hospital I was at, it was a um, kind of a one-stop shop when it came to our network analysts. So we did everything as far as storage to networking, security, whatever. Um, I did the fishing team, and then um, now I'm currently a uh, network security engineer at Hurricane Labs. So this is the company, uh, some of the metrics on them. Around 2,000 employees, most of them nurses. There's, uh, you know, all of the admin people. So you have, uh, you know, the normal C-level execs, directors, you know, but you have housekeeping and a bunch of nurses. So the majority of them are female. Um, around 30 sites, so that included quick cares, doctor's offices. Um, we had two um, major size campuses. And we already had decent security structure. So we had already um, come a long, long way when it came to actually uh, blue teaming and um, putting a lot of defensive measures in place already at the hospital. And we got to the point where we realized that phishing was something that and we didn't we didn't have any user education yet. So phishing was one of those things that we knew we should probably focus on now that we had actually gotten all the fires put out. And they gave me a thousand dollar budget. So the thousand dollars, right? Thousand <laughs> dollars um, in a normal like uh, if you're going to go to Fish Me or Acuvon or, or whoever it is that that sells these kind of programs is going to be way more than just a thousand bucks. Um, it's not going to be catered to your organization, for the most part, that I've heard anyways. And um, you're not going to get as much of the bang for buck that you would, I think, personally, being able to build it from the ground up in an uh, environment that you already know about. And that $1,000 was, I mean, obviously not including my time um, and all that kind of stuff, but this was just meant for um, the prizes for the award system that we did. So I'd never fished anybody before. Uh, I wanted to make it as blatantly obvious as possible. So I used a Gmail address. Um, the first one that I sent actually went to, I used the Harvester Python script. It goes out and it scrapes like Facebook and LinkedIn and Google for everybody that with uh, an email address at your domain. So I found about 50 people out there that came from our website and a bunch of different things. And that was my first target. I knew already, you know, the only thing, the only user education that we did have was to become um, PCI and HIPAA compliant. You had to do like the CBTs. So once a year, they click next, 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 and, and went through a five questionnaire thing. So I wanted a baseline. I wanted to know exactly what my users would click on, how many um, usernames and passwords I would get, and kind of keep track of that before I let anybody know about the program. And I got 
32, uh, 16 usernames and passwords right away. And that, that campaign I only left online for a couple days. Um, you, on, you only need one, right? You only need one click. And the four reports weren't right away either. I mean, it, it had spread out over a week or so. We had people walk up to us and say something. I think maybe one person forwarded it. Um, just not the best uh, when you're when you're kind of trying to rely on your users to point out things that you don't know about. Um, I did make a mistake, so I'd never used set other than sending myself some stuff and, and doing some stuff like in a lab environment. And uh, that's why, let's see if we go back. I said sorry about the broken link is because I did it wrong the first time, sent it to all 50 people and it didn't work at all. Uh, and set completely just crashed. So I just, just started everything over again. And it didn't seem to matter because, I mean, it, it looked legitimate that I was really sorry I sent it out. So here's the second one. I wanted to do uh, pretty much exactly the same thing, still from uh, a Gmail address, still plain text. The, the link actually was a, uh, a scrape of our HR portal. And it still was fairly successful. So in that case, I got 54 usernames and passwords. And in this one, I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure this is the campaign where I actually got our CEO, who used to be a CISO, um, which then I had to wait six months before I actually started phishing people again, <laughs> because we actually had to build a program. So we wanted a program with teeth. I'm doing a, a corporate version of this talk next week, and they wouldn't let me keep the slide. I was very disappointed. So we called it something spells fishy. We wanted it um, punny. We wanted them to be able to remember it and kind of associate it uh, with different things. So everything that we did, we tried to put a fish theme on it. Um, we gave them a little bit of uh, user education when it came to, um, we had a, like an intranet page where we would put all this crap up there um, that they could go to, to to learn about what phishing was and what the actual program was. And with, we let them know, I'm a big proponent of using the word hacker in a positive light, so we let them know that there was actually hackers working at the hospital. We were there to help them. We weren't there to smack their hands when they did something wrong. And yeah, that we wouldn't be actually using any of their stuff maliciously. Uh, we did a, a very large emphasis on reporting, um, and I'll come to that a little bit later, but um, just because they know what not to click on doesn't mean we still don't want them to report, don't not want them to report it. That's a horrible sentence structure, but um, that, that was our, our main emphasis, was they actually got entered into the uh, words program every time they would report either me or an actual legitimate fish that had come in from the outside. And we list a couple things that they probably should report. Um, we had to come up with some contest rules because we had people trying to get around it by, you know, forwarding stuff from home. <laughs> like, oh, look, I reported this, but no, that doesn't, that doesn't really count. Um, we had to, so we came up with these rules, um, and then we also didn't uh, count spam. There's some more rules I'll let you read. I hate slides with lots of text, so. So here were some of the awards. Um, monthly, we, so we had a uh, coffee shop in the, in the hospital. Monthly, we would give them uh, 10 bucks to two different people out of the fishbowl. So we had like a, an actual fishbowl. Every time they reported it, we physically put their name in it. We would like make a show of walking around and having people like actually pick out the names monthly. Quarterly, we did Bass Pro and Red Lobster, trying to stay with the fishing theme a little bit. And then end of year was 300 bucks to Amazon. So we gave them a lot of incentive, and that was our $1,000, you know? We used set, which was free. I kept track of a shit ton of stuff in Excel, which was horrible. Um, <laughs> and uh, 
you know, for for the thousand dollars, we actually were able to create more of a program than we would have been able to um, otherwise. This is what they got after they gave me their usernames and passwords, and after they clicked on a link, or if they opened up, uh, I added like some PDFs to emails and sent them out. Um, they were redirected to this. We didn't want them to think they were in trouble. I did have an older nurse um, call up our help desk and just she completely bitched them out. She said that uh, how is how how is she ever going to trust us again if we have to if we put her through this? <laughs> like whatever, whatever. <laughs> just. We just won't enter you in the, in the drawing then, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so this was one of the first screens. And then uh, this, was, this was the most painful, and I've, I've actually, I'm working on a, a, a program with a couple friends of mine, I, so I don't code, ready, right? I do the other blue team stuff. Um, so I'm working with some of the coders that I know to create a, um, an actual program that will do this instead of keeping track of it in Excel because that took up the majority of my time. Um, so after we created the program, after our CEO and uh, directors actually vetted it, uh, we decided, all right, now we'll, now we have a baseline, we know what our people can do um, and what we should focus on um, edu educating them for. So the idea was if they if they clicked on something and fell for it, they were automatically re-enrolled the next month. If they successfully didn't click on something or didn't give me their username and password, they were taken off for a couple months. So that way we were actually focusing on the people that were easiest to dupe, um, and we knew kind of where we needed to focus our education. So if a lot of people in a spe specific department were having issues, we would actually go and provide them with education in that specific department. Um, and it kind of gave us uh, an idea after that baseline of, of where they were getting better at. So the first uh, three months, I think it was, it was as, as blatantly obvious as I could possibly make it without saying, oh my god, this is terrible, you shouldn't click on it. Again, from Gmail, I made it high importance one line of text, and that tax bracket login went to an internal just IP address um, with a certificate error. It was just absolutely horrible. I got 322 usernames and passwords. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Like, I mean, I was um, the, f the first fish, and I mean, really, it still makes me happy, but every time you get a username and password, I was, I was like, seriously all giddy. Like, I'd never, you know, I'd never done anything like this before. I was only doing Windows admin stuff. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was super happy, and I was told that I should never tell anybody that because it was a bad reaction to have for getting your <laughs> users' usernames and passwords. So here's February, kind of the same idea. Still got 89 username and passwords, but now we have 49 reports. So it's a good trend. Um, a lot of the users that got caught the first time weren't getting caught the second time, which was also good. March didn't really turn out so well as far as results go. Um, if you've ever heard of March of Dimes, so we were a hospital, we liked doing uh, big donation drives and stuff like that. Um, I think I had already made a rule in Outlook to send anything that said March of Dimes to the trash because it was just getting way out of hand and super annoying. We were getting like five emails a day on please give us your money for March of Dimes. So I only got four. But 37 people did report it. Maybe it was specifically for the program, I'm not sure. Um, but it was nice that those were actually going up. This we were really happy about. This was one of our director level uh, people. A, a, uh, a person that he normally worked with um, in another company had sent him this email to click on, what was it? Uh, it says, please kindly review the important document I uploaded for you on Google Secure Drive. Click here for immediate access. From somebody that he trusted that he was working with on a project. He's like, you know, this, this seems a little weird. I think I might want to ask before I actually click on it. So 
you know, we use like this, this email as a poster, poster boy for what you should do. Um, he had a bad feeling about it. It didn't, he didn't necessarily have to do anything other than ask. Giving them uh, quick and easy access to somebody that's not going to berate them is uh, very important. So, uh, you know, making him feel good about the choice he made uh, is, is also a part that we tried to include every time. This one was fun, uh, one of the more fun ones that I put together. Uh, it's a, let's see here, fine china set for $575 uh, from Kohl's. It's an Amazon email, um, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and uh, I actually had a lady cancel her Amazon and her Kohl's card, which I felt bad. It was pretty cool, but I still felt bad. <laughs> And this was looking for reporting only. There was no credential capturing or anything. So 261 reports I felt pretty good about. This was our third party penetration testing. Uh, we had a uh, we had a third party pen test done every year. Um, I asked them if I could use this as an example uh, in the slides. And this was, I mean, we're paying for this. It's not like just m me, a jackass, sitting behind a computer that's never done this before, sending out stuff. They legitimately get paid for this. This is what their company does. This was their email. Didn't fish anybody, <laughs> right? It was huge accomplishment. Um, they sent out two different emails. That's what the two different sections are. Um, they use kind of the same the same uh, method. They scraped. I don't know if they use the harvester or what, but they scraped the internet to find different um, email addresses for our company. And nobody was fished for the first one. The second one, they had left the campaign up longer than what the scope was. Um, and after that, somebody actually clicked on it. I get, I, I consider it counting because, you know, um, real attackers don't have scopes, but depending on who you talk to. So incident response. Um, out of, out of all the things that are, that we're looking for in reporting, that's why you. That's why you want them to report it to you, right? You want them to report it so you can actually do something uh, proactively. That's that's going to stop everything um, from happening after the either they accidentally gave up their credentials, somebody has a shell on their box, whatever. You want them to be able to report it to you. So here's some of the IR. After after that professional email came in, this was the timeline that happened. After three minutes, it was already reported, and after what was it eleven? We had already null routed everything. I mean, it's not it's not impossible. You just have to give the information to your users to be able to report it. And that's some more other stuff that we actually had done. Um, other people that had reported it as well, different directors. This was another fish that I did. Not great. Um, the reporting kind of went down. At this point, we wanted to start working with um, uh, our internal marketing team to try and get like posters out there and more information in newsletters and that kind of stuff uh, because we weren't seeing as many people interested in the program. It had been six months already or seven months already, and I don't know, maybe their attention span isn't that long. <laughs> this is another one that I really enjoyed doing. We had just opened a JJ's. Uh, Sorry, Jimmy John's across the street, like a month prior to this. Um, this was just to get the user education out to a whole bunch of people. I wasn't capturing credentials or anything. I took that, oh my god, you've been hacked, slide deck, and just made it into a PDF and attached it and tried to see how many people wanted a 20% off uh, Jimmy John's coupon. So we still got 31 reports, which was pretty good. And I think this is my last one. Hey, look. Yeah, all right. So this this was my last one. Um, same thing. I just wanted to get it out to as many people as possible. I was leaving the company anyways. Um, so I said, fuck it, and just send it to everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I really don't know if the report there were more reports than that or not. That's how many there were before I left. 
All these actually show up decent. Every other place that I've been, all the all the projectors just show these graphs really shitty. The graphs aren't that exciting anyways, but it's nice when you can actually see the data. So it was, um, you know, the email sent is um, always varied depending on what I was doing or what I was looking for. And we see that reported went from almost nothing, and you could actually see reported then on the graph. And the phishing went down. And this is the percentage, just to show it in a different way. So percentage of reporting went up, percentage of phishing went down. So what I learned, um, I, I wanted to put the whole, uh, it's, e it's, what, it's easier to track flies with honey than vinegar, but it's not a real thing. So I searched for that and found that, this XKCD. So it turns out that, um, so I, I talked to a couple other people that had phishing programs within their organization. Some of them actually had like walls of shame. Some of their users got demerits for falling for it or, you know, getting their box uh, infected. Um, we wanted to do, I mean, we had a pretty positive culture already at the hospital. So it wasn't that difficult. Everybody, you know, kind of like a family atmosphere. Everybody got along pretty well. Um, but having a positive spin on everything um, kind of got everybody else uh, not in the mood, but they, it, it got them more um, more apt to play along and more apt to report it to our help desk. And that's from the uh, <laughs> yeah, that's from the Verizon uh, DBIR. So yeah, that's that's pretty scary. You're not always gonna you're not always gonna not fall for something, not click on something, not open something, but the fact that you get them to report it is the most important part, right? Who cares if they actually, um, well, I guess you do care if they get a shell on their box, but if <laughs> if uh, if they report it, again, it's the, it's the most important part. And obviously no one's exempt. I mean, we got physicians, we got our, like I said, my, the, C, uh, the CEO, um, our IT uh, assistant director, like it was a three day weekend, he came in on a Tuesday, he wanted to get through all his email, and boom, he gave me his username and password. He knew we were doing the campaign. And he st still, it still came through. Uh, getting the point across, that's why I wanted to work more on communication. A whole lot of people didn't actually know about the program. Um, you know, I got a lot of services done in the hospital. You know, when you're a hospital employee, it's cheaper to go to your own. So, you know, every time I went to, you know, get a prescription or get blood drawn, whatever, I would make sure to try and talk to everybody in the in the hospital that I knew, anyways, to see if they knew about it, just to see how uh, how much out outreach our current um, method of getting the information was working. And this is for Adrian. I know he's not in here, I don't think, but he, he said I should have more naked men in my slides. So <laughs> uh, it's not one size fit all. I talked to, actually when I started this, uh, I talked to a company that, a uh, worldwide company, has 24 hour help desk for um, customers to call in. They wouldn't implement a phishing program because the people that were on their help desk were constantly billing. So if you take time away from them by actively phishing them, you're, you're essentially taking money out of their pockets. And they didn't want to implement a program like that. I'm happy to say, though, they, I just got contacted by the same place, and they're putting in a, they, they hired a full-time person to do internal um, assessments, or to lead their assessment team, and to start a phishing campaign. So I get to talk to him next week, though, on this, to, to see kind of what he's going to put in place, um, which is a good step. I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that they, uh, they're going forward with it because, you know, it's I, it, it's pretty important. Every, everybody's going to get owned, and every every pen tester uses uh, social engineering from phishing to get in if it you know if it's in scope. So what I would change um, when I first started out, the um, I didn't really tell the help desk what to tell everybody. And that seemed to be a problem because some of them were just ignoring it when they called in or uh, they weren't actually telling them, you know, good job, you caught it, this is what you need to do next time. They, so from the, from the get-go, what I wanted was um, uh, like a, a script that they would read off of just to give them an idea of what to go by. 
So we ended up doing that after a couple months. More automation because the spreadsheet sucked. Adding vishing and physical, which I'm not good at all. But what we're thinking about was like um, going to uh, and, and swapping services with other hospitals. You know, since everybody knows your face, you might be able to get away with something else at a at another hospital. And then more measurements. So all this stuff, all the t all the templates, all of the uh, blank phishing emails. It's like HTML HTML files. Um, the posters, everything is on my blog if you want it. I know a couple of people have tried to use it in their organizations. I'm not sure how well it's gone, but uh, hopefully it's helped out. So you don't have to create a program from scratch. And then these slides are online too because that's a lot of crap. But uh, different articles, so Trusted Tech has a good one about gamification. Ben 10 has a really good blog about it. I think he's talked about it several times. Um, and I have to plug the book that I'm in, the one that Bill and Gar uh, Valley wrote. Um, and I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Ta-da! <laughs> you can clap now. <laughs> hmm? You want me to go back two slides? Any questions? Okay, so the question is, did I see a correlation in between the time of day I sent, uh, sent the email and when they clicked on it? I did not personally, but I've read some things where there's like certain, certain times of day or certain days of the month, days of the week that they're more likely to, the, to click on things. Yeah, yeah. I've, um, for, for some reason, like Wednesday morning or something sticks in mind when people are more apt to click. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's it's interesting. I, I I don't know if this is enough data to tell. Plus, I didn't keep track of the times either. So, as it's two martini, right? <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So, did the question was, did I consider doing internal emails? Like, if somebody's box had gotten popped, um, that last one that I sent out to everybody. Do, 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 where's it at? That one. That one was internal. That was actually our chief, chief of nursing's email address that I used. What's that? What were the results? Uh, that. That's the one that I sent to everybody. Yeah. I don't know how much time I have. Am I good? All right. Did I really rush through that? Shit. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Go take a nap. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't throw up on stage. Go ahead. Right. Right. So he, the question was, did I uh, like randomize the user selection? Other than the last one where I actually sent it to everybody. Um, other than that first initial email that I used, uh, uh, the Python script, I, it was completely random. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I just picked, uh, I don't know, anywhere from 300 to 500 or so people just to, uh, not, not to cover everybody because everybody's on such close working quarters that I didn't want it to get out, you know, from mouth to mouth, but yeah, it was completely random. Oh gosh, I have no idea. A lot. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say we got maybe a, a dozen a month, maybe ish. Yeah. A lot. I mean, some that we caught up front before the users got to see them, but yep. Anybody else? All right, you're free to go. Oh, wait, ah, one more. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the question is, is there something to consider about um, the phishing campaigns and IT being able to maintain trust? 
Um, we tried to do everything that we could to let them know that we were the good guys and bad people were going to make this happen anyways. So the fact that they're learning from us instead of learning by getting their credit card stolen was what we tried to put across to them. Yep. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody.